All right. Uh, next, we have uh, Nikolos, who is a PhD student in art history and already sharing your screen. So take it away, Nikolos. Thank you, Bill. Um, yeah, in respect to my time slot, I'll proceed with my presentation. So we live in, in a world that is gradually becoming more and more secularized, as they say. And at the same time, we witness how religious institutions strike back and exercise their power. Uh, some contribute to peace building, while others trigger civil confrontation, hate speech, and a series of armed conflicts globally. These affairs became a focal point for many contemporary artists. As a result, the discipline of art history serves as a valuable instrument to observe, systematize, and narrate a justified and nuanced story about the complex interplay between religious institutions and political establishments, as well as the broader relationship between religion and politics. Coming from Georgia, which was part of the Soviet Union from 1921 to 1991, my interest lies in understanding why the artists in the late socialist years began incorporating Christian themes into their works. At the same time, I am curious to observe how this practice evolved over the time. During the Soviet era, religion was replaced by an atheistic ideology. Thus, in Georgia and other socialist republics, the church was suppressed and was seen as a threat to the Soviet lifestyle, much like contemporary avant-garde culture, which was strongly empowered by musicians and visual artists. Therefore, the saying enemy of my enemy is my friend seemed operationalized by the church and rebellious contemporary artists against the common adversary, the Soviet government back then. However, the landscape changed after the collapse of the USSR with the Georgian Orthodox Church aligning with the government. This period of newfound independence prompted a reevaluation of national identity. During this transitional and vulnerable context, the Georgian Orthodox Church became the principal architect in constructing the ideological profile of the nation by merging the concepts of Georgian and Orthodox Christian. Subsequently, many contemporary artists started revisiting religious concepts in post-Soviet contexts. However, the address is in new, very often the church itself, that qualified controversial artworks as blasphemy in return. This is how we have at hand rich portfolio of art projects public performances and happenings, new media works, literature and theatrical pieces and cinematography and many more that use the power of creative expression to question the role of religion across different departments of life. Although my primary scope is Georgia, I'm extending the research to Russia and Ukraine, considering Moscow's decisive role not only during the Soviet era, but also in its attempts to establish a new Soviet paradigm across the region, even nowadays. In fact, the capital of the punk prayers is using the Georgian Orthodox Church as its soft power in hindering Georgia's European integration. On the other hand, Ukraine presents an alternative scenario. A newly independent Church of Ukraine aligns with the national aspirations of Ukraine, and it neither acts as the Kremlin's puppet institution nor opposes Ukraine's pro-Western trajectory. Consequently, contemporary Ukrainian artists exploring Christian themes do not face acquisitions of blasphemy. If granted the opportunity during my PhD program, I wish to juxtapose my findings from Eastern Europe to the context of the other extreme of continental Europe, namely Portugal, and precisely its half century long dictatorial regime, Estado Novo, which was based on Catholicism. Despite the non-chronological nature of this comparison, it may explain the current affairs in the East and contribute to anticipating regional trends. I'd like to thank you in advance for your feedback and would like to appreciate your recommendations regarding potential research methods I could 
refer to in the frame of my projects. Thank you.